My pleasure to introduce Chad Bolick, of Director of Impact and Innovation at Tides. Chad leads Tide's efforts to evaluate the impact of 150 million in annual project and grant making activities and to create new programs and services that unlock social sector innovation. Prior to joining Tide's, Chad was the Director of Global Partnership Development at BSR and served in other leadership positions at social enterprises and foundations. These experiences convinced Chad of the importance of unlocking new sources of risk capital for the social sector and of the valuable role that organizations like IC play in creating a compelling path forward. So please join me in welcoming Chad Bolick, who will be introducing our keynote speaker. Hi, everyone. Uh, Bonnie, thanks for the uh, generous introduction. Um, it's a real honor to be here today at the IC Spring Venture Fair, uh, particularly on the heels of Earth Day. And also on behalf of Tides and our CEO, Melissa Bradley, I'd like to uh, introduce an equally inspiring leader uh, who is also a Tides board member, Lisa Hall, the president and CEO of the Calvert Foundation. Now, the last time I saw Lisa was uh, about five months ago in San Francisco, and she uh, didn't have a voice. Uh, she lost her voice, and she was passing notes around the table through proxies, trying to get her point across. So. Uh, we connected this morning, and um, I know she can speak, so you're in for a treat. So now just a bit of context on Tides. Um, as Bonnie mentioned, I lead an impact and innovation team at Tides. And for 36 years, we've been at the forefront of progressive social change, with work focused on advancing equity, education, and the environment. Uh, founded in 1976, as Bonnie noted, we work uh, on financial management. We are a intermediary for the nonprofit sector. Um, we, practically speaking, do four things from our offices in San Francisco, New York, and Washington. We provide grant making and investing services to donors. As the largest fiscal sponsor in the country, we host nonprofit organizations under our 501c3 umbrella so that ch social change makers, not unlike those of you here today, can focus on their mission while Tides takes care of everything back office. We also provide consulting services and we also provide shared nonprofit spaces and services via Tides Presidio and New York City campuses. Um, the common thread across our work is social change. And women leaders like Lisa, those of you who are pitching here today, the angels in the room, considering investments, are the catalysts who are helping spark a movement to reimagine what capitalism can be on a planet in desperate need of more impact investors focused on the triple bottom line. So to me, no organization stands out as much as the Calvert Foundation in this space, and Lisa is at the forefront of that movement. With a BS from UPenn and an MBA from Harvard, Lisa now leads the Calvert Foundation. She assumed this role in January 2011 after nearly 25 years of industry experience with the Enterprise Foundation, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Travelers Insurance. When she joined Calvert in 2005 as Chief Lending Officer, she inherited a $76 million loan portfolio. And in just a few short years, Lisa more than doubled that to $190 million before, while keeping losses under 1.2% during a staggering period of financial turmoil. This same dynamism is now at work in the driver's seat, and it's aptly called win-win at the Calvert Foundation. More on that in a second. You know, we, we, receive, we all receive loads of emails and barely peruse many of them before deleting them. But when I saw win-win come through a few weeks ago, I opened it because it was from Lisa, and Lisa's on the board, and we like to... <laughs> And we like to keep in touch with what they're up to. But as someone who, uh, at my time at BSR, worked on a handful of factory-based women's health projects, uh, most of them in developing countries, it's common sense to me that women investors, entrepreneurs, and leaders will accelerate the shift toward a more sustainable global economy. And WinWin promises to do just that. WinWin stands for Women Investing in Women Initiative. And it's designed to raise money from women 
and those who care about women and invest that money in women in need of hope and opportunity here in the US and also abroad. So it's also no surprise that after 12 straight years at an all-girls school, Lisa's first initiative at Calvert would be a women-themed initiative. Uh, and I should also mention that our CEO, Melissa Bradley, who also went to an all-girls school for 12 years um, and is a close friend of Lisa, uh, there seems to be a little bit of a theme there with you gals. So, uh, so with that, we're going to turn to a quick intro video to continue this uh, introduction of Lisa. And I'm sure she's going to wow you with women investing in entrepreneurship. Thank you. The Win Win Initiative, Women Investing in Women, is an opportunity to invest in empowering women in the US and internationally. It's an opportunity to take investment capital and make it available to women business owners, to facilities and social services that support women and help to improve their financial stability. An example of a project that can be financed through Win Win is the Paradigm Project, an organization based in Kenya that's building and manufacturing, distributing clean cook stoves, better for the environment and creating opportunities for women to go to school instead of collect wood. The facts show that investing in women is smart economics. When you look at the data, in countries where 10% more girls go to school, the GDP actually rises by 3%. By bringing women in to the economy in a powerful way that improves the financial stability, not just for those women, but for their children, for their families, and therefore for their communities and for the world, that's my vision of what Win Win accomplishes. So good afternoon. It's, it's really a pleasure and an honor to be here today. Um, thank you to Chad for that really nice introduction. Um, and thank you to Investor Circle, specifically to Bonnie and to Nick for inviting me and including me and including Calvert Foundation in your day today. Um, I love the fact that you guys are celebrating an anniversary. Calvert Foundation just came out of its 15 year anniversary. And we're building a future for impact investing, not just for the next 15 years, but the next 50 years and longer. And I'm so excited to be here to see such a great turnout, to see so many friends and partners in the room. There are note holders. In fact, let me ask, you know, how many people in the room are familiar with Calvert Foundation and its work? Oh my gosh, look at that. That is a friendly crowd. <laughs> and how many folks are note holders? Ah, smaller number. Um, you know, we believe at Calvert Foundation that every investor can be an impact investor. And so it's my hope uh, by the time I finish my remarks this afternoon that you join us in, in what we really believe at Calvert Foundation is a movement. And, you know, I'm preaching to the converted here today. Investor Circle has been on this journey for longer than Calvert Foundation and has really been part of a movement for many years. Um, you know, we like to say at Calvert Foundation, we've been doing impact investing since before they called it that. And I think Investor Circle can say the same, that you were really in the forefront and ahead of the trend and will be here for the future, whether or not impact investing is the trend of the moment or not. So thank you for your work and your support of the movement of impact investing that Calvert Foundation wants to see change investing for every investor so that all investors are impact investors. Um, I also, before I go on, want to acknowledge Darren Dotson, who is here from the Calvert Mutual Funds. There he is, who many of you already know, um, but that is, is with us today um, and runs uh, the special equities group uh, at Calvert Mutual Funds. So as you just saw in this video, we're very excited at Calvert Foundation to have recently launched Win Win, Women Investing in Women. 
This new initiative will invest in organizations that empower women by providing small business loans, helping to finance daycare facilities, helping to finance education, helping to finance microfinance. Our goal is to raise $20 million from women and people who care about them, so a few good men are welcome. Um, and we're gonna use those dollars to invest in women around the world. And one of the reasons that I'm focusing on this initiative in my remarks today is because it's the big new thing that we're doing at Calvert Foundation, but also because it's really an example of our new strategy in action. Our work at Calvert Foundation is to really connect individuals and most of our 7,000 investors are individuals. Many of them, we like to say everyday people, like me. Um, I'm a note holder, and many of our staff members are note holders. And anybody can be a note holder at Calvert Foundation. And what we're doing, we believe, is connecting people with communities. Connecting people with communities that they care about in the same way that Investor Circle has been supporting entrepreneurial communities for over two, dec two decades now. Calvert Foundation is working hard to connect retail investors with communities they care about so that their money can go to both do good and do well. There's another message behind in the win-win campaign, and it's around this idea of investing in women and how important it is to have inclusive economies. Because having inclusive economies, you know, having rooms where not everybody looks the same, having entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial communities where people look different from each other and have different experiences and different backgrounds is a way to make the pie bigger. At Calvert Foundation, we do not believe this is a matter of splitting up the pie into tinier pieces. It really is how do you grow and expand communities through entrepreneurism and inclusive entrepreneurism. Investing in women, as we said in the video, it's really just smart economics. The data has been very clear that when you invest in women, you create a multiplier effect. Women are more likely to extend the benefits of an economic investment, financial stability, or a gain to those in her family and in her community. There's some hard data that's out there around what happens when women own land in emerging economies. When they own the same amount of land, they actually produce yields that are 10% higher. When you see more girls go to school in emerging economies, if just 10% more are attending school than have been in the past, there's a direct correlation to a rise in GDP of approximately 3%. So investing in women is more than just doing the right thing. It's also creating a stronger, expanded economy. I love today's theme about where angels meet heroes. What a great line. It's a beautiful image, and it's really a great way to tell the story of impact investing and the work that you're doing at Investor Circle. You know, a lot of times people will use the phrase, money is the root of all evil. And we don't believe that at Calvert Foundation, and I doubt that the folks in this room believe it. The, the original verse, it was actually sticking with me because this had come up um, in a conversation with someone. I was like, where does that phrase come from? The money is the root of all evil. And so I looked it up, and that actually is not the verse. It's not the original quote. The original quote is, the love of money is the root of all evil. And we think that money can be used for good. We think Investment capital is a tremendously powerful force for good in society, in communities, and in the economy. It can generate social benefit, which you know all too well from the 20 years of experience that Investor Circle has had investing not just for financial return, but also for social benefit and environmental benefits. Calvert has been a pioneer in impact investing. 
a path that you know well, you've been on the journey with us. And we make it possible for people to invest with not just the financial return, but also social benefit. For everyday people, as well as some institutions and corporations, to invest with a goal of ending poverty. And we call this impact investing. Impact investing supports economic empowerment and financial inclusion of low and moderate income people. It helps to engage communities with one another. And this connection in our minds is the ultimate goal of financial inclusion. It's about a connected circle of people. I often talk about a virtuous circle that connects investors to the communities that benefit from those investments with clients really at the center. And we think win-win, Women Investing in Women, is an opportunity to engage a whole new set of investors and introduce them to the field of impact investing. You know, it's really incredible how much money women control in the economy. There are some numbers that say it's $20 trillion. However, women's capital has primarily been engaged in philanthropy. We think there's more power than that in the purse. We want women to use their capital to support causes and efforts and entrepreneurs that they are passionate about, to use their capital to empower other women. So I'd like to, as an example, give you a profile of one of our heroes at Calvert Foundation. Her name is Jane Skeeter, and she's an entrepreneur out here on the West Coast. She's been in business for 40 years creating architectural glass for clients in hospitality, healthcare, retail, and more. And she's had a tough time. As many of you who are entrepreneurs in the room will know, it's not an easy line of work to be an entrepreneur. She works at the intersection of industries typically dominated by men, manufacturing, construction, and glass. And Jane Skeeter has had her share of bad luck on her journey. In 1991, she was a victim of arson in the building next door to her company's, burned her workspace to the ground, leaving nothing but the kiln. Then just three years after that, the earthquake left her business in ruins. And in August of 2001, when she had, I'm sorry, two, yes, 2001, when she had gotten back on her feet, she purchased the building she had run the business out of for years, and then 9-11 hit having a direct negative impact on her client base and making times difficult for her. But she has persevered. And she has persevered in a way that not every traditional mainstream bank wants to finance. So she had to take out a loan from a non-traditional source of capital. And that capital came from a community development financial institution called Valley Economic Development Corporation. And the loan has allowed her to produce more, to buy equipment in a way that uses less power, less energy, and most importantly for her community during a time of really tough unemployment in Los Angeles, she's been able to grow her staff by 65 employees um, over a two year period. So this is what we mean when we talk about impact investing, is helping entrepreneurs like Jane Skeeter. And investors today are interested in making these types of investments to support their communities. You know, investors are rethinking risk. They're rethinking their relationship with their mainstream banks. And they are rethinking their relationship with money. We are seeing people more and more every day wanting to understand the connection between their money and social benefit and social good. Who are the people? Who are the businesses behind that financial statement that you get in the mail? You know, one of my favorite stories about Calvert Foundation goes back to the fourth quarter of 2008. When we got this incredibly lovely letter from one of our note holders who said, I was so excited to get my Calvert Foundation statement this quarter. First of all, I actually had a return. It was a small return, but I had a return on my money, which I couldn't say for any of my other investments. 
But more importantly, this investor knew that the money that he had invested went for good in the community. Whereas the other money in the rest of his portfolio, he wasn't quite sure what had happened to that money or how it had been used or for what purposes. So we are seeing more and more note holders like this individual who want a connection between their money, they want their money to be aligned with their values. And by the way, we're not just talking about people's play money or money that historically has been in their philanthropy bucket. You know, I know here at Investor Circle, people have lots of different sources of wealth that they contribute to help entrepreneurs to seed their businesses. But I also know that for some of the investors in the room, that money comes out of like that little special allocation, right? It's not part of their main investment portfolio. It's not the money that Morgan Stanley or Goldman Sachs manages for you. At Caliber Foundation, we believe that every investor should have some part of their investment portfolio allocated for impact, for social impact. And more and more, there are tools and products that are available in order to do that. And you know, Caliber Foundation, we're not the only product out there. Um, we are one of the few that's available through broker dealers, but there are many products out there along the spectrum of risk, social benefit, and financial performance. And there are options to invest your cash in community development banks. It's the same insurance that you get at Bank of America that you can get at a community development bank or credit union. And then on the other end of the risk spectrum is private equity, like the investments that you're making through Investor Circle. So we're really encouraging all investors to look broadly at their portfolio. The same way that we talk about inclusiveness for society and inclusiveness for the economy, we want you to be inclusive when you think about where your money is invested in your investment portfolio. You know, so many of us take for granted the ability to access capital, ability to get a loan, to go to school, to start a business, or even to just buy a car if we need it. But in fact, there are millions of people in the United States and around the world who are shut out of the financial system. And opportunity is hard to come by when you are shut out. During the past few years, our economy, as we all know, has suffered so greatly. And yet the wealth keeps building at the top the disparities are greater and greater than ever before. There's recent uh, research out of the Pew Center that shows the disparities along all different types of lines, along race, along gender, and they're really quite shocking um, to see the concentrations and the, the gap that's growing in wealth in the United States. We believe that now is the time to act that this type of disparity doesn't benefit anybody. It doesn't benefit the wealthy, and it doesn't benefit people who don't have access to traditional sources of capital. We want all investors to rethink their portfolios. Once people understand this concept, they get on board. And we've seen people, younger people, trying it out online through Microplace at amounts as little as $20 and others obviously committing much more, investing millions in impact investing. I'm so proud to be leading Calvert Foundation as its CEO and proud to be part of an organization which has a very rich, deep history. And many of you know our founders, Wayne Silby and John Guffey, who together created the Social Responsible Mutual Funds Calvert Investments. And years ago, they reached out to their shareholders to say, we think we should be more, doing more impact, deeper impact. And they had to go to the SEC to get permission, but they got approval from the shareholders who said, yes, we're willing to take 1% of our assets that are invested in the mutual funds and dedicate them to deeper, higher impact, to making loans directly in communities through microfinance, through community development financial institutions. And that was the beginning of the Calvert Foundation. We still have this great shared history with the Calvert Investments, but today we operate independently. 
And we have thousands of investors, more than 7,000, that invest anywhere from 20 to, to uh, many millions of dollars. And they do this through our community investment note. I like to say, you know, we're a real security. We actually have a QCIP. You can look us up on Bloomberg. Um, and you can invest um, in increments of $1,000 with your broker dealer or come directly to us. And we take the capital that we've raised by selling this note and invest it in things like sustainable agriculture. And it was really actually very heartening, and I, I want to be careful, I don't want to bias anybody's vote, but it was very heartening to see um, the Evergreen folks uh, here today who we invested in very early. And those are the types of projects that we invest in with the capital that we raise. Um, we also have been part of things like the Fresh Food Fresh Works Food Fund in California, uh, which has allowed the public to get involved in financing food deserts where there are communities that don't have access to fresh food and these investments are helping the local corner stores, the mom and pops in the bodegas to simply purchase freezers and, and um, refrigerated systems that will allow them to make fresh food available in their communities. And that program raises capital at, in amounts as little as $20 from individuals. And we've seen people rally around these type of issues, making the connection between their communities and their money. Internationally, we've invested in something called Transform Africa, which is also an agriculture um, initiative. You know, whenever I'm in California, I can't help but think about food, because the food is so much better here on the West Coast than on the East Coast. Um, but uh, the work that we're doing around food security in Africa is really critical to helping small farmers there be part of the supply chain. So we see the trend, we see the interest from investors, and we certainly see the need and the opportunity for investment dollars to reach the poorest of the poor and have greater impact. I'm really excited to be part of what we believe is a larger movement in this country. And I'm excited to get questions from the audience about our work at Calvert Foundation or what we're seeing more broadly in impact investing. Um, but we believe that the time has come and that the time is now. And you know, we're certainly trying to leverage the opportunities that we see in the field. And we look forward to the possibility of Investor Circle being a partner with us as we continue down this path and continue the journey. Thank you. So I'll, I'll take uh, questions until Sally tells me I have to stop. <laughs> yes. Yeah, hi. I'm Josh Mailman. As a, uh, yes. hi, as Josh. a founder, hi. And as a founder of uh, Investor Circle and Social Venture Network with uh, Wayne Silby, the co-founder of Calvert, uh, it's wonderful to, that you're at Calvert now, that you're running Calvert, and that you're doing the kinds of things you're doing. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josh. Um, could you talk a little bit more about uh, the Women's Fund, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the kinds of companies you're going to invest in, uh, and what, what you're looking for, and uh, you know, how you see exits and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, and so I should clarify that Calvert Foundation is almost exclusively a debt investor. We're a lender. We make loans. Um, and so some of the organizations that we are lending through, are, are lending to through our win-win um, campaign include um, daycare uh, facilities, include, we just actually uh, looked at an opportunity with a healthcare center called um, Lifelong Medical, which I believe is closed now. It was in the pipeline and pretty close to closing last week. Um, we are making investments in microfinance institutions that focus primarily on women. And there are three criteria associated with the campaign. One is that there are more than 50% women being served as clients. Two, that it's women-led or women-owned. And three, if there is a commitment to, through the capital we're providing, to serve more women as clients. Um, so those are some of the examples. And you know, we do a lot of work with community development financial institutions, many of whom are deeply rooted in their com communities lending to entrepreneurs that are women, um, as well as to community facilities that support women's financial stability. 
Uh, good afternoon, Ian Fisk. Hello, Lisa. Hi, how are you, um, Ian? So, depending on how long the SEC drags their feet, sometime between 270 days and several years from now, we're going to have legal crowdfunding. Yes, yay! Which means that everybody in their, their mother and sister are going to have a platform, and there's going to need to be somebody who takes an industry leader to keep us focused. Does Calvert have any plans to get involved in that? So we do, and we're, we have been carefully watching the legislation um, and very excited to see it pass. Um, you know, very um, eagerly anticipating the regs. And we believe that there's an opportunity in, in uh, crowdfunding to raise equity capital in the same way that we've been raising debt capital from individuals directly. And I think it is going to be really important to make sure that in addition to you know, broad opportunities for investors, that there's someone out there providing a screen around social and environmental return. Um, and we certainly hope to step into that opportunity. You know, equity has not been something that we've done a lot. Um, we've done it in very, very small amounts as a, only a small slice of our portfolio. But we believe there are partners that we can work with to be able to create the vehicles online for individuals to invest directly. Um, and, you know, you, all you have to do is look at the success of something like Kiva where they've attracted tens of thousands of individuals to this sector. It's a little bit different model than ours because their model is around philanthropy and our model is around investment. Um, but we think that it is a good indicator of what's possible with crowdfunding. Yes. On the win-win, can you clarify international versus domestic exposure? Yes. So we expect that roughly 75% of the portfolio of the 20 million that we're investing will be here in the U.S. Um, and so there are a couple things that make this unique. One is that it's an accessible product. So there are some products that already exist that are focused on investing in women that have a gender lens, is how it's being described in the marketplace. And we've been working very closely with Jackie Vandenberg at Criterion, who has a big gender lens investing initiative. Um, and there are other products, but they are mostly focused, focused on accredited and qualified investors. As far as we know, and as we've been told by many, many people, this is the first product of its kind that's going to be accessible to just about anyone, because you can go online at $20 and invest. Um, so it's a highly accessible product that's focused on gender lens um, or gender as the lens for investing. Um, and uh, we've already seen incredible response. It's really resonating. We actually, you know, internally at Calvert Foundation, because we've been doing this work for a long time and we know the value of empowering women, um, but internally we've been amazed at how much this has resonated with the investor community because it is the only thing of its kind that's an accessible gender lens product. And so our little internal joke is women, who knew? <laughs> For past Mother's Days, Calvert has been yes. one of the organizations I've been able to buy a card for my mom and say donations are made to help women. Can I buy an investment for my mom this Mother's Day? Yes, you absolutely can. All right. <laughs> thank you. And I would have been remiss not to mention thank you so much for reminding me that we actually have, a, a as part of the win-win campaign, we're doing a Mother's Day rollout. And we've been so fortunate to have Eileen Fisher um, who is a part of Investor Circle and her foundation um, to support what we're doing. And in previous years, it had a Mother's Day campaign in partnership with her, are doing another campaign, or a, a, as part of our win-win campaign, doing a Mother's Day um, highlight. And so I think starting next week, you'll be able to go online and see um, where you can easily click to buy an investment for your mother. Ah, so uh, I, I have in previous years done um, one for my mom who loved it. And, and it was the first time she actually understood what I did for a living. <laughs> She's like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> yes, Bonnie. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I'm curious, you know, even this room knows about, everybody knows about Calvert Foundation, the majority did, and then the hand, not as many hands 
having the product. So clearly, you're making a big effort to have product that is available more broadly to everybody. I'm curious, how, what opportunities do you see, or how are you reaching a broader market to make yeah. sure people are aware of these opportunities? Because I think one thing we're interested in as well is getting more capital and the opportunities for crowdfunding, more capital into this space that isn't already here. So curious, your take on that, how do we get this word out to the broader uh, market? Well, I think there's a very important role for organizations like Calvert Foundation to really build the excitement, to build the movement. Um, and I have been recently convinced in the year that I've been on board in my new role um, that social media can be a tool for that purpose. Um, it's interesting, in the very early days of Calvert Foundation, there was actually this thought that we would reach uh, investors directly through direct mail campaigns. And they did some direct mail campaigns, and they targeted um, communities that they thought would be mission aligned, like teachers and social workers and nurses. And quickly, we realized as an organization that that was super expensive, more expensive than we could really afford to do, and that the conversion rates weren't very high. So we moved to a different strategy, which has been incredibly successful, of working with financial advisors. And so almost all of our marketing for the last 15 years has been focused on the financial advisor community and broker dealers. However, in our new strategy, as we um, went through a process last year with support from some people in the room of reexamining our strategy, we came out of that deciding that we're not going to abandon marketing to financial advisors, but that social media allows us to actually go back to this original idea of reaching out to investors directly. Um, so we did a big social media effort as part of the win-win that was incredibly successful. I, I still have a hard time believing these numbers. Um, I think it has to do with how you count what an impression actually is. But we had tens of thousands of impressions of people either pulling us up on Twitter or looking at Facebook or checking out the website. It was incredible the reach that we had almost overnight when we launched Win Win because we used social media. So we've got to get the movement going so that everybody feels like it's part of their obligation as an investor, just like any prudent investor or most prudent investors wouldn't have a portfolio that didn't have some of it in cash. We want people to feel like there's something wrong in your portfolio if some, some of it is not dedicated to impact investing, to, to, to benefit. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and so uh, it's a movement, and we want to be out in front with all of you helping to lead it. Thank you.